Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Make sure you can see what's going on. Like she said, I'm Maria Reed. I am the creator of the Home Renovation Series, Moving with the Military. And we honor military families with surprise home makeovers. I think it's pretty awesome, yes. And I'm here today, I'm in Texas, but I'm here today with Brian Levy, who's in um, North Carolina, is that right, Mr. Brian? I am, Maria. I'm coming to you from Mooresville, North Carolina, uh, here in our studio. So uh, obviously, uh, you have beautiful weather there, and you can see I have sunny and 72 degrees here, so uh, outstanding weather for both of us. But glad to be here today and glad to partner with you again on this workshop. Um, you know, so with you being the Army Spouse of the Year, me being the Navy guy, you know, we got to continue on with this Army-Navy thing. So what do you think yes. about that today? Go Army. Go Navy. Can I say it? Beat Navy? <laughs> but don't All forget... Day. It's not just go Army, go Navy, go Air, go Marines, go Air Force, go Coast Guard. It's a, it's all branches. So uh, it's all branches. That's right. All I know. Uh, I know. We're excited to be uh, really worldwide today, and uh, really, really touching uh, what I believe is a, a great organization, the USO, and how it impacted me during my career. So uh, real excited to be with you guys today, and uh, giving back to uh, to you that give so much uh, for the USO and also our country. So. Happy to, happy to kick this off today, Maria. Thank you. I'm watching some of the, the comments below. We have people at Huachuca in Brooklyn and New York. Yeah. So that's exciting. Please, please drop in the comments and let us know where you're watching from. Fort Belvoir, Fort Hood. My people in Fort Hood. I love it. <laughs> so we're all together, man. That's pretty awesome. Make sure I just came back. Alaska. Yes, Alaska. So I love seeing that, man. I love seeing it. It's pretty awesome. Sorry, someone keeps calling me and I keep telling them you can't call me when I'm in the middle of this, y'all. Just saying. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be refurbishing a piece of furniture. You've got one and I've got one. Uh, can you talk through first? Kissimmee, Florida, my Florida peeps. Yeah. Talk us through, Brian. So uh, what, what we do is we're, uh, we're going to be talking about today about customizing furniture. Uh, and as you, as you know, um, especially in the military, uh, sometimes you don't have the ability to paint walls, right? Maria, so what can we do to really enhance a room with furniture? That, that's true. So oftentimes, especially in military housing, there's lots of restrictions. So we got those white walls that we've been living with for 18, 20 years. But a great way to add a pop of color is to paint a piece of furniture. That way you don't have to pay it back, paint it back when you PCS. Take it with you, and when you get to the next house, if you want to paint it another color, paint it. It's okay. So it's a great way to add elements of design without having to do big, huge projects or have to paint walls and then paint them back in the PCS. I like that idea. So you bring up PCS. So talk about PCSing and what it might do to furniture and how using this technique, we can uh, bring life back to that furniture. Awesome, story of my life. So our, 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 obviously all our military folks that are watching, PCS means permanent change of station. Basically, you're moving, you're gonna move again. And oftentimes, the furniture doesn't come back in the condition that you put it in the truck. It can get a little bit beat up, bent up, and after seven, eight PCS moves, you know, it's not always in the best of shape. Um, but one way to continue to give it life is to paint it because those crack marks and, and dings and scratches, they add character. My husband likes to call it rustic. Yes, very, very rustic. Uh, so uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're really going to be talking about how you can take that piece of furniture and transition it into something in your home that, that for a look that you're looking for. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a piece of furniture you have. You know, maybe you find it at a, at a, at a store, maybe a used piece of furniture, maybe somebody you know is moving, gives you a piece of furniture. Look at that furniture differently now and think about the possibilities and the opportunities you could do with that piece of furniture. So. For my furniture, uh, we had a color here uh, that was prior to this tan, uh, was just about the same color, Maria, that you chose on the, on the other side of that table there, so. It looks a little brighter, yes. maybe just a little bit. But what you can do with furniture is you can, um, we're gonna talk about chalk paint today, but you can also paint it, uh, you can stain it. Uh, I know, uh, Maria, you talked about how your husband likes the stained look. He does. He is, he is definitely not a painted wood guy. That is not his thing. He prefers the wood grain and seeing beautiful wood grain. So he likes stain. 
but sometimes you just don't have that ability, especially if it's like even a piece of laminate of wood. You might like the shape of the furniture, but it's not necessarily real wood. So, um, sorry about that. There we go. Um, so he likes to see things stained. I prefer, of course, a little bit of paint because I'm able to do more with design with adding color. But you've got a piece of wood there you can talk us through, right? I do. So uh, this is an unfinished piece of wood, um, which you could also do whatever technique we're talking about. Uh, but in this particular case, if you do have an unfinished, unfinished piece of wood, the, some of the things you want to do first is you want to come in and with a sanding sponge or sandpaper, come in with a light sanding on that unfinished wood to really get rid of any defect, defects, any burrs, anything you might have in the wood, um, and really make sure that you get a good clean surface. So one way to do that as well is if you have, wood, if you have any holes or cracks in the wood, you can use wood filler, use a putty knife, you can go in and fill that hole before you get in and either distress it with chalk paint like we're gonna talk about today, paint or stain. Um, another, another thing you do after you sand it is you want to make sure that you use a tack cloth to go in and give it that final cleaning to get any dust particles off. Get all that dust off. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Because we know what dust is going to do to paint, right, when it gets on the paintbrush? It's going to give a lot of flaky dust particles. There it is. Um, so once that's clean, you would then come in with a primer. So you'd make sure you come in with a primer to go in and get that wood ready for painting. Um, so primer on an unfinished wood uh, is necessary to make sure you go in and get a good even coat of the paint. Um, so, Maria, distressing furniture. How many times have you distressed furniture in, throughout your life? Feels like hundreds. I really do think I've done a hundred different pieces, whether we're doing it for ourselves, doing it for a friend, or doing it for a family that we're doing a home renovation for. We just, we do it all the time. It's economical, especially when you're working on a budget. And you can't really, you know, get too high, spending money on, on high-end furniture, but you've got this great piece that, that still has life, no reason to get rid of it. Chalk paint it. Can I talk about two steps I've got going on here before sure, I jump over Sure, sure. Please, please do. All right, so this is a piece of furniture that we found literally on the side of the road. It had a sign that said, free, take me. <laughs> so I did. And you can, for chalk painting, you can sand off all of this paint that's currently on it going to take some elbow grease, but you could also use an orbital sander. You could do that. You could also use, and this is just one of my favorites. You know, I just like this product because it feels like it's very natural, but it's a paint stripping uh, product it's called, what is it? Citrus strip. Citrus strip. And the, re the reason I like it, and I'm going to bring the camera a little bit closer. I don't have the fancy Studio 2 camera set up, <laughs> Navy guy. Just saying. Well, once again, so, the Army, the Army's in the field, and, well, the Navy guy is right here. Uh-huh. We'll just leave it like that. I know, so, I know, I know. Let me know if you can see this, Brian. Can you see that? We can. Uh, we can see awesome. that. Yep. So I put this on about 25 minutes ago so that I could let it start to bubble up. So what it's doing is actually going to, see if I can tilt it a little bit. I'm just going to, see it? Can get, do you guys see the paint just coming right off? Look at that. Look how easy that is. Now, it's bringing it down to the finish. I'm just going to throw this on the other side. I know, kind of gross. It's coming right off. And I only did one section. But that's just how it comes off. We use my towel. So as you can see, she was able to take it off with just a real light touch. So, you know, you can do the light sanding touch. or you could do this gel, which uh, this gel, as you can see, makes it a lot easier. The only thing with gel is you have a little more of a cleanup with yep. your furniture before you start all the other steps. So you want to show us what you have to do to get that wood ready to, to paint? Absolutely. So you're going to have to, and it depends on how many of these coats you want to do. There's still another, like a lacquery kind of finish over this one. I would probably want to do it again or let this dry after I've, I've scraped it off. Then I'm going to wipe it down with a cloth to make sure with a little bit of water, very light, damp cloth to make sure I get the product off. And then I might go over it with a sander 
um, an orbital, orbital sander just to get this kind of lacquer that's on it. And I see why they painted it because it looks like that someone had fun with crayon. Oh no, so that table has a lot of history. This table has some history. And so th I just wanted to show you those techniques. So uh, Maria, we did have a, a question come in. So I uh, just yep, wanna, yep. wanna explain to everybody um, that we do uh, have the questions coming in. So please okay. be using the Q&A box and put the questions out there as we'll answer them uh, as they come along. So the first question, Maria, is can I paint furniture that has previously been stained and how? Yes, you can. Um, this furniture has been stained and painted and now it's gonna get painted over again. But like you said earlier, even with chalk paint, even though they say, oh, you don't have to sand it, giving it a light sand is always recommended because that just helps get any kind of particles off. And if you do have divots, some people like to leave them, like I said, it's character, or you really don't want this like gaping hole, then you wanna be able to uh, wood putty it, wood fill it and sand it down. Did that answer the question? A yes, little it... light sanding and then you can start to paint right over that finish. Yes, because chalk paint, uh, the, the great thing about chalk paint, and we talk about chalk finish paint, and that's what we're using today, is it's, yep. diff it's different from chalkboard paint because it's yes. a latex paint that has a fine powder added to the mix that creates a unique matte finish. Mm -hmm. So the brush strokes and imperfections actually become part of the unique look of your furniture. So that yes. fit, and the finish, once you're done, can be sanded in places to create a distressed look or waxed for even an aged look or more of a satin yep. finish. So and we're gonna do a couple different ones of those today. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So wanna talk about your, uh, your base coat there on the table? I am, and I'm gonna pull the camera off. I'm gonna pull the camera off and I'm actually gonna flip it so you guys can see that. Can you see this? Yes. This was the very first coat of paint that I did. So it's still, it was very light. You still see the, you know, the under color. And then I'm coming into the second coat, which covers it up a lot more. But part of these brush strokes, even though it does have a bit of self-leveling, part of those brush strokes is the character of what makes chalk paint unique. Exactly. So I've got, I've got my two on. Make sure you guys can see that. You guys can see that? I've got my two on, and I wanted to come down here into the legs because this is where there could be character to add more of the antiquing and distressing would look better than a flat surface. But it can also work on these edges because there's some little character in there as well. I understand you're gonna do the same, Brian, right? I am, I am. So just a real quick uh, debrief, you'd actually would use the chalk paint. You could use a cup. Yeah. Oh, first things first, Maria, safety. Uh, gloves, yes, we gotta sir. have the gloves on, right? Let me get my gloves on. And one quick call out, uh, when you're using that gel that she was using, also make sure that you're using gloves uh, with that gel. So with our gloves on now, um, you definitely wanna make sure that you get a good, even first layer with a darker tint. Um, so your first layer is gonna be a darker tint. So you come across with a two inch angle brush, just like I have right here, come across. And by the way, both of us have already done our first layer. Yep. Come across and you literally just, like you would anything else, even strokes, and I'll, I will tell you one thing, chalk paint dries pretty quickly. So you don't have yes. a lot, you don't have a lot of time to, to really play with it. So you gotta make sure that you're, you're moving steady, right Maria? Yeah, and if you're doing it outside like where we are in the Texas heat, it dries real quick. I don't think it took but 15 minutes to get that coat dry. Yeah, it, it doesn't take long at all. So as you go through, you wanna finish up coating your furniture with the paint which we have already done already. Um, let it dry, so most, if you're gonna do two coats, like you get the first coat on, you don't like the way it looks. Like Marie, you saw Maria's, there were some brush strokes, you saw some white stuff, what the original coat of paint coming through. Go through with, with a second coat. And with our chalk paint, they recommend at least one hour in between coats. So make sure there is one hour in between each coat. So that way now, you know it's dry. That way you know it's dry. So now you now have your paint or your furniture with that first layer of paint on. Come back with the sanding brush again, just very lightly, not very heavily, very lightly to make sure there's no specks of paint, anything like that that might have come up because you want to make sure 
that once you get this second layer in, you're gonna get a good distressed look. So just come back with a sanding brush, not very heavy, just very lightly. Go through, make sure there's no dirt, dust on it. You can also use a tack cloth to make sure that it's clean and ready for the next coat. No, ma'am. <laughs> we got some friends in the neighborhood. <laughs> Say hey. Well, well, for the fire pit clinic, you had the dogs helping you out, so. You know, it's all good. Uh, we do have a question come in. So uh, there's a question, is there a particular grade of sandpaper for use when sanding previously stained furniture? Now, I start, but go ahead if you want to do yours. So we, what we have here is a fine, it's actually a sanding sponge, so it's real easy to use, but you want to use a fine grit. You don't want to do too much because you don't want to take off a lot of layers. So you want to use a high numbered grit, uh, which we have here, it's sanding sponges and it's fine grade. So just going through, because you don't want to take off a lot of layers of, of, of paint or stain. Right, I'm using 180, but I think the question was if they're going to try and take the stain off for the first time, not the paint, I like to go in with an 80 grit on an orbital sander because I'm trying to get it off. Yes. I want to get down to the natural wood. But if you're trying to just this area, you know, after you've painted it, you don't want to go with, like you said, um, a one that's a sponge that's not fine. So I have a 180, there's 200, there's three, 320. So it just depends, but, but you'll read on it. It says fine grit. I'm trying to see if mine said fine grit. Uh, another, yes, another, 180, uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, 180, fine. Uh, another good question that came in, does light color chalk paint work well on dark furniture? Or what steps do you need to take? More layers. Yes. So this was, as you can see, of course, it wasn't really dark, but she does have that dark uh, layer where she took the gel coat off or she took the strip, the citrus strip off. Yeah. Um, so it does, but you just need more layers to go right. across, maybe two, maybe three coats to get to that point to where it's an even color. An even color, exactly. And three coats is perfectly fine. It's the, what it's going to take you the longest is the wait time. Exactly, exactly. So uh, we're now at this point now where we're getting ready to add our second coat or our second color, which in my particular case, I came in with a lighter beige or a lighter tan. Maria, what's your, right, sec now, what, what's your second ahead. coat? Well, mine's kind of interesting because I already had the light coat underneath. So I am not doing a second coat of a lighter color. Okay. I did a second coat of the same color because I have three things going on. I've got the aqua, I've got the white underneath, and I've also got that dark, dark wood that's underneath. So my project could actually be a little more forgiving that if I went too far sanding, I might get exactly what I want because I'll get that dark, dark color, that antique underneath. And at the end, um, I am going to do an antique wash finish to give it a little more aged look than just the straight blue paint. Yep. So, and we're, we're going to talk about some of the other techniques as well that, that you can use. I mean, there's so <laughs> many different things you can do with chalk paint. Uh, it, you know, and there's so many different variations of it. Um, but for, for my application, and I'm sure, Maria, you're doing it as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to grab one right now. What we're using is a chalky paint and wax brush. Um, it's different than your typical paintbrush. Uh, it actually has uh, an, an ability to take paint up, but then doesn't give it a full, exact, um, even coat. So yeah. you're going you're gonna to take that chalky paintbrush, dip it in the paint, and then I've get... I've got some white. You have beige, I have some white. I do. Get a paper towel, uh, which you can either get the rolls or the box, and dry try to dry the paintbrush because here's the thing when we're doing this second coat you don't want it to be like the original coat you actually just want to be coming across and barely skimming the surface uh, with your paint so for my for my example here just you don't want to do that see how thick that is which i've showed you here as well that's too thick that means you have too much paint on your paintbrush so work it out Use that, paper, use that paper towel to get as much as you can off of that paintbrush. But you still want to... Yeah, you want it to look like dry strokes. Exactly. Exactly. So you just want to get a very light 
dry stroke on the furniture. And some of the places that it works best on are areas that are raised up. Yes, so you so, want to pay particular attention to your edges. Yeah, Good. edges. Less is more here, less is more. I'm gonna bring in my camera a little bit closer so they can see, oh, that looks nice. I can't, I Did can't. Hey, Mariano, we can. See if I, I got don't... it there. You guys see that? I don't see her. Hold on, I gotta get my video back up. I can't see, uh, I can't see what you're doing right now. Oh, okay, I was just bringing it in. There you are. So they, you can see the edges? Yes. You see it? Yes. And it just has a light, a light kind of white stroke. So again, this was my paintbrush, and I just went very light with the brush on the edges. So it gives it kind of that, you could, they call it many things, rustic, farmhouse, distress, shabby chic. It's got lots of names. So you could do so many different ways, and it, it depends. You know, I definitely want you to try it out if you haven't done it before. I uh, highly yeah. recommend that you try it out maybe on, a, on another piece of wood or maybe a piece of, of furniture that uh, maybe is hidden or maybe underneath. I definitely have- One you find on the side of the road, free like this baby? Or one that has free, but obviously it has, it has history because you're uncovering what crowns on a table. So uh, you wouldn't have never found that if you didn't strip that paint down. Exactly. So you wanna talk about what your next steps are once we get this uh, second coat on? Absolutely, now you could stop here with the dry brush if you didn't want to add any more distressing, or you can come in and actually distress this, which means in essence is I am taking more paint off. So I would not necessarily want to distress in the middle because distressing is trying to mimic wear and tear. And that would really happen on edges that are raised. So I'll come in, I have an 80 grit, you can see it. Bring it a little bit closer. I can. All right, I have an 80 grit, and I'm just gonna take it right on this like area right here. See how I took it off? Ooh. And the brown that was actually under the white paint came through. Let me move the camera so you can see that. And that way you get that real distressed look. You don't get that perfect finish because as you know, distressed furniture uh, has wear and tear on it. So what you're actually creating is the look of wear and tear. Right, so that, it came through. I took some of the blue off. I took some of that uh, white original paint and it went down to the sort of brown stain that was originally on this table. So, and it took like three tiny little strokes to get to that. So we don't, you don't wanna do too much, too much of it. But I might go on to another little area like right over here, do the same thing. Get down to that brown. A little goes a long way. You don't have to do a lot. And then come back down to some of these other areas right here. And that's why I like working with the sponge. The sponge makes it really easy to work with. Just like coming through right here, taking that little edge off, that edge off, and the same down here. Just finding those little spots. So I don't know if you can see it on mine or not, but I've actually gone through the darker beige back to the original color of this furniture, which really, yes. like, like you said, is really giving it a nice accent on this tan because I now have the light coat that I put on top, the, the second coat, the first, original coat, which is the darker, and now I'm bringing up that original green. So it's really giving it that nice look, that, uh, that distressed look. So it's really coming out really good. Yeah, and this, to me, this is therapeutic. It's art. You're going through creating something that you think looks beautiful. And I say to people all the time, because I get asked, what's in style? What should I do? Here's my answer. If you like it and it makes you happy, then do it. I know that may sound crazy, but just because neutrals might be in and you hate neutrals, then you're gonna hate living in your house. <laughs> if you like color, Bring in the color. You've got to be happy because home, home is such an important word. And I am so thankful that 
the USO and that Lowe's really want to connect military families and have such a passion for home. That, that means the world to me. You Just know, saying, friends. And you think about that word home and, and how important that is because, uh, you know, that's where your family comes together. That's where everybody unites. And uh, yeah. this is one opportunity you can do to impact uh, your home and really put that finishing touch uh, on your home. So, you know, this distressed furniture can be done on any furniture. Like Maria said, she found a roadside free one. You know, if Road you're dry, free. once you become a distressed furniture expert and you really like what you're doing, you're driving down the road and you're finding those pieces of furniture and you're picking it it's up and saying, man, what could addictive. I do with that? It is very addictive. You'll find, I do it all the time to my husband. We'll be driving. I'm like, honey, wait, look. <laughs> He's like, another one? So I'm going to find a use for it. It's going to work. But it, it does become, become addictive. You want to do it. You want to try new and different techniques. You know, this is a great starter technique, like you said. You can do it even if you're working on a laminate piece of furniture, so something that's not very expensive. Sand it down a little bit first so that the sand, uh, so that the um, chalk paint can grab hold to the finish and, and you're good to go. We did our son's furniture, which was this, I don't know, yellowy brown weirdness, but it was baby furniture. And then I redid it in a gorgeous, almost the color you have there, in a grayish with antique. And now he's 15 and it's great teenage furniture. Changed out the knobs, made it look cool and it looked like a whole brand new bedroom set for just a few dollars. Yeah, see, and look, and, and it's your own. It's your own personal touch. Exactly. Um, the one I call out I will have, I know for time's sake, we went very quickly. Um, yes. But the one thing is on that second coat, make sure that you give it an hour to dry in between before you come back and sand it. Uh, especially because, right. you know, for me, I'm in a climate controlled room. However, Maria is probably out in Probably some humidity, I'm sure, uh, which takes a little bit longer to dry. A little bit. So just making sure that you got an hour and it, it's dry before you come back in and sand it and distress it. And like we said at the beginning of this clinic, guess what? If you don't like what you've done, start all over. Paint another color. There you go. Paint uh, we, it again. We do have a question that came in. Uh, how moisture resistant is chalk paint on furniture? Now, chalk paint will scratch so chalk paint has to be sealed whether you use an a poly a polyacrylic or a wax which i prefer which is what i have that i'm going to open it must be sealed so if you just leave do two coats of chalk paint three coats of chalk paint and it walk away you'll scratch it as easy as i'm doing this and the paint coming off you put a book on top and you try and slide it off it will scratch unless you seal it so what what I mean, the two that i have here uh, there is an antiquing wax yep. and there is a clear sealing wax. So the antiquing wax, what that does is it actually uh, allows you to highlight cracks and crevices in the wood. Uh, and you'll just use this using a, a brush or a paper towel or a rag. And you're just going to go over it to give it that protective layer to make sure that if somebody sets a cup on there, you're not going to damage that chalk paint. And then if you don't yep. want the antique wax, you can also do a clear sealing wax where you give it that final coat of protection to make sure that if somebody does spill something on it, it won't damage the chalk paint. Right, and I wanna add, the clear is clear. It has no additional color to it. Um, they do deepen the color. All the waxes that I've used seem to deepen whatever color you have just a little bit. I like that. But with antique wax, it's a brown. So it is going to have a much deeper, richer, darker finish. You may or may not like that. It depends. So I actually want to open this one up and show it. So what so she's I saying can... there, what she's saying there is, you know, once again, try it on a spot, maybe underneath, maybe underneath the table here to see if you like it, because you you may or may not like uh, what that's going to do. This is what the antique finish that I have looks like. It looks like a gel. So. I'm gonna... Go ahead. So. You know, using these two waxes, you're now giving this piece of furniture uh, new life. Uh, you've given the chalk paint, you've given it the distressing, you've now given it a seal, and now it's ready to go back in and be used in your home. So, so here's the brown. I just wanted to do a little one so you could see how it's going to change the color of this piece. A little bit, it's not a lot. 
But what it does is it does accent those cracks and crevices that are in the wood from maybe over the years or just maybe the type of wood that they used. That they used. So if I can grab my phone again, this is just the paint by itself, and this is the paint with the, fit, with the antiquing. Do you guys see it? Yes, we do. You can see the difference? Yes. Okay. And that's where my distressing was, was bringing out that stain that's underneath it as well. And then you would do that wax finish, whether it's an antique wax finish or just a clear wax finish over your entire piece. All right, well, guess what, Maria? We just demonstrated how to distress furniture. Woo, we did it! So now, start, start, now start looking around your home and seeing, well, what furniture can I redo? What do I have the opportunity to go in and try? And like I said, just try it on a small piece. Maybe, maybe you go find something and experiment with it. And you use different variations of distressing, use different colors, figure out what works best for you. But it really is a great opportunity for you to make that furniture your own, right? Yes. And if you just PCS and you have this furniture that you say, oh, I'm gonna get rid of it, I'm gonna get something new, take a moment and think about it. Maybe that's a piece of furniture that you can repurpose, redo, and not have to get rid of it doing a little, a little painting on it. So what we would like to have you guys do is when you get your first piece of furniture done, come back in and post pictures of all the hard work and effort and what you did uh, for your own furniture. We wanna see pictures on here, just like you were when you were sharing where you are uh, in the world. Uh, share those pictures of, of whatever your first piece is or maybe your masterpiece, maybe your second, third piece. Right, if you've done another piece or you've done something you wanna share, we would love to see it. There's lots of techniques and different kinds of paints. This is a great starter. There's a lot more you can do. You know, it's, it just is your creativity. So another thing too, uh, we're gonna be staying, staying here, staying on uh, for the next few minutes or so for Q&A. So please get in there and uh, type in your Q&A and we'll answer them uh, as they come along. So. But Maria, it was a great Army-Navy competition again today. We both win, I love that. Yes. I do, I do happen to like your color a lot though. It looks like a, a little, you know, Army, Army uh, kind of OD greenish, brownish color, you know, OCP, I'm just saying. Maybe I'll finish this one and ship it out to you. Maybe we'll do that. I like that idea. All right, so at this I point. I will give you a, a super aqua Tiffany blue table. <laughs> It'll look good here in the studio. Anyhow, been a pleasure today. I'm really glad to, uh, to come in here and give you the opportunity to go in and make a difference with your own furniture. So Maria, another great- Thank you guys. Another great Thank workshop. You. I always love chatting with you, Brian. You are pretty awesome. You keep me on my toes. Well, you do the same here. So uh, been a great. So Liz, uh, we're gonna turn it back over to you and we'll uh, go through with some Q and A. So thank you today. Thanks, see you tomorrow.